team coverage of the latest Colorado wildfires at 10. Private first class Jessica Lynch. The ambush. It was scary. It was just so scary. I just put my head down and I just prayed. Just pray it away. Her brutal injuries. I've never felt that much pain in my whole entire life. The missing hours, what doctors say about a sexual assault. That's the part that I hope that fades away forever. And we go to Iraq to find the Iraqis who were there for her captivity. And we tell you the private war she waged against the enemy and despair. And what about the rescue? We watch the controversial videotape, some of which she sees for the first time. But later when you saw that they had videotaped it start to finish. Why did they do that? The Jessica Lynch story, courage, controversy, and a 19-year-old girl. What does it really mean to be a hero? A Diane Sawyer exclusive, Private Jessica Lynch, an American story. Now from New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening, and if you're just tuning in, we welcome you to this special edition of Primetime as tonight Jessica Lynch speaks for herself. Seven months after the ambush and dramatic rescue that ignited a national debate about her story and its meaning for America in a time of war. At the center, of course, all those questions about the courage, strength, and sacrifice of all the young men and women who head into battle. But as someone said, maybe courage is just fear that has said its prayers. So if you're just joining us, we're going to begin with a quick review of the journey that took a 19-year-old girl to the deserts of Iraq from a tiny town in the hills of West Virginia. Palestine, West Virginia, population 350, a place of economic hardship and oh, home to Jessica Lynch, pretty warm. a little girl who loved pink dresses and perfect hair. <laughs> They busted on me a lot about that. She decided to join the Army for the $1,100 a month and the dream someday she'd get to see an ocean or a beach. One article said that you didn't get a chance to go to the mall until you were in your senior year. Actually, to get out and see a, a mall, I was like, wow, yeah, <laughs> shopping. In her government-issued glasses and huge hat, the five-foot-three-inch Lynch willed herself through basic training. Later, her roommate and best friend would be Lori Piestua, a Native American with two children. She was just so proud. I mean, it was just something I wanted to be, but I never could. So as we return, the tour in that convoy entering Iraq, in the back where the support soldiers are, cooks, clerks, truck drivers, where their vehicles are getting stuck in the sand and a wrong turn sends them into an ambush in Nazaria. As we said earlier, in the Humvee, Lori Paesto is driving. The senior man in the rear of the convoy, First Sergeant Robert Dowdy in the passenger seat. Two soldiers from another unit, Sergeant George Bugs and Specialist Edward Arnguiano, are on either side, while in the middle, Jessica Lynch, her rifle jammed, her heart pounding. What was the first sound you heard? The first thing that said to you, this is it, we're under attack. All of a sudden, just a lot of shooting. A lot of guns going off, a lot of just, it was, once it started, it was just a chaos. You could hear them bouncing off our vehicle. You could hear people screaming and just them yelling out stuff. It was scary. It was just so scary. You could see them on the roofs, and they were, like, hiding in the windows. They were coming from everywhere. We had vehicles getting stuck, vehicles running out of gas. It was just, I mean, our weapons were jamming. Around them, a violent sea of Iraqi men armed with heavy equipment, tanks, rocket launchers, machine guns. The Americans heavily outnumbered and outgunned. Their best weapon, 50 caliber machine gun, jams, and the gunner goes down wounded. The desperate American soldiers jump out of exploding vehicles, dragging wounded friends behind them. Others from the convoy remember it as Lynch does. It suddenly dawns on me that there's someone right there shooting at me. Pickup trucks with AK-47s and all different type of weapons. I was almost dancing on the gas pedal, you know, I was just standing on the gas. 
For one hour, the battle rages. The two soldiers Lynch had just met, Specialist Edward Anguiano and Sergeant George Bugs, are firing their weapons furiously. The hot shells ricocheting through the Humvee. First Sergeant Dowdy shouts orders to rally the reeling troops outside and inside the vehicle. I mean, he's just, he's telling Piastwe, you know, to, to go, to keep going, don't, don't, you know, get scared, don't freeze up, just go. But also, you know, he was, he was fighting back too. He was fighting. Do you think if you had just turned and raced out of there, it would have been a different? I, I don't know, I mean, maybe. We might have, but yet it was his duty of him being the first sergeant. That was his duty to make sure that his soldiers were taken care of. How was Lori through all this? She was so calm, so calm. It was like it did not even face her that we were in this middle of this ambush. And then at one point, he turns to Lori and says, go, speed up. Yeah, he told Lori to go, get out of there. and. You know, at that point, I just, you know, what can I do? I just put my head down. I just prayed, just pray it away. What were you praying? For him to, to save us, to get us out of there. It was just constant repeating, just, oh, God, please, please help us. Vehicle down, vehicle down. And yet later, after it was over, out of the smoke and wreckage, Stories would emerge that spoke to the mythic ideals of bravery. And one of them was a story about Jessica Lynch. The headline in the Washington Post, she was fighting to the death. In it, Private First Class Lynch is portrayed as a kind of Rambo. The source, U.S. officials. Hard as nails. That's what they're saying about Private First Class Jessica Lynch. She shot until she ran out of ammunition, shot several Iraqi soldiers, even though she herself had been wounded. And this morning, she's recovering at a U.S. hospital. These were the stories, but we ask her, what is the truth? That you had fired your ammunition, that you had gone down fighting, that you had been there killing Iraqis to the end. No. When you heard that people were writing this. Yeah, it hurt. It hurt in a way that people would make up stories that they had no truth about. The other four people on my vehicle aren't here to tell that story. So I would have been the only one to have been able to say, yeah, I went down shooting, but I didn't. I did not. Well, you could have just let it go and said nothing. I could have, but I'm not about to take credit for someone or something that I didn't do. And it's possible there is another soldier who does deserve the credit, who went down shot, stabbed, and fighting. Sergeant Donald Walters, whose blonde hair may have been mistaken for Lynch's. You know, he was a good man. I was, he was a great person. So just to get this clear. Yeah. Did you fire your weapon back, and did you kill any Iraqis? <laughs> no. No. My weapon did jam, and I did not shoot. Not a, not a round, nothing. I mean, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm, I'm scared. I was nervous. I was, I mean, every word that you can think of, that's the way I was feeling. But yet I was proud. I was proud to be there. I was proud to serve with every one of those in that vehicle. I was proud to know them. I knew that they were there in my vehicle fighting for me. And so what about the stories of her fighting? Did you go down like somebody said Rambo? No. No. I went down praying to my knees. And then that's the last I remember. A crash, a sound. I didn't hear anything. Blackness. Yeah, it was just black, total blackness. So what happened? The official Army report says that the Humvee carrying Lynch crashed into a jackknife truck at high speed while being strafed by Iraqi gunfire. Sergeant Bugs bled to death. Specialist Anguiano killed on impact. First Sergeant Dowdy crushed. Lori Paestua unconscious with severe head wounds. And also tangled in the wreckage, an unconscious Jessica Lynch. Coming up next, waking up to a nightmare, surrounded by the enemy. I kept repeating, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me.
on the road and stuck trying to get business email in all the wrong places? Get Verizon Wireless Remote Email Access. Stay productive and in touch when you're away from the office. Can you hear me now? Good. Now ask how you can save up to $200 on select wireless PDAs and BlackBerry devices. Verizon Wireless. We never stop working for you. This is pure evil. You're scaring her. She needs to be scared, and so do you. I am looking for my granddaughter! On the right now! From director Ron Howard. The Missing. Rated R. Opens everywhere November 26th. Hi, I'm Gordon Elliott. Try this Campbell soup at hand. This is chicken with chicken. mini noodles. Oh, I like the finger. Boo. Oh. Do you ever skip a meal? Yes. Why skip when you can sip? It's very good. Let me stop you from making a snacking accident. It's the first microwavable heat and go cup with an easy sip lid. Let's try the corner office. You do risk management? Yes. That's a lot less risky. I'm taking the candy, it's an intervention. You'll be much happier with it. I've got all 11 super hand varieties here for you. Excellent. Ooh. Good afternoon, make it Campbell's instead. A first Christmas. Do you remember what I gave you? A stuffed reindeer? I think I did better this year. A three-stone diamond ring from Kay means two things. Every diamond is hand-selected, and she'll absolutely love it. Every kiss begins with Kay. Allergy congestion won't ruin my life again. Now, without a prescription, Claritin D decongestant tablets. My doctor prescribed Claritin D, and now I can get it without a prescription. Claritin D relieves even my worst allergy symptoms, my congestion, my sneezing, and my sinus pressure. Claritin D. <laughs> Introducing the Kodak EasyShare camera and printer dock. It's the easiest way to get real Kodak photos right from your digital camera. Thursday, Britney Spears. She's only giving one interview, and it's only to Diane Sawyer. Can I just say that? I did. Emotional, surprising, unplugged. I have to ask a couple of things about Justin. Britney even lets you inside her New York apartment on Primetime Thursday. In one moment, vows will be made. You look amazing. A serial killer's uncovered. Find this guy! Oh, my God. And nothing will be the same. Oh, you're out. What are you talking about? New NYPD Blue ABC next Tuesday, 10, 9 central, if your discretion advised. Two families. Drop the gun! The FBI. I don't think you're ready. And the mob. I care about all of you. Locked in a battle between right. I'll do whatever is necessary. And wrong. Do not involve children. Okay. How far would you go? You want me to kill the kid's father? For family. He's got a mother. Line of Fire, premiering in three weeks on ABC. Viewer discretion is advised. West Virginia, terror strikes the Lynch family at home. Once again, Diane Sawyer. March 23rd. It's a Sunday. You're watching TV. Yes, and I see a truck and it had like a water buffalo behind it. A U.S. Army six-vehicle supply convoy was ambushed by Iraqi forces in southern Iraq near Nasiriyah. Jessica's mother Deirdre and her father Greg Lynch watched the horrifying news of the ambush and then that night a state trooper rolls up carrying an army officer. I knew what he was going to tell me. What did he say? I don't know the exact words but our daughter's whereabouts were unknown. Mrs. Lynch says she races outside through the darkened night screaming. Mr. Lynch tries to be her support, but as the terrifying days pass, he collapses two times. Your world shatters. And what about Sergeant Ruben Contreras? He is out with his unit and sees a list on it, the name Jessica Lynch, MIA. I just ran in, into the tent and lay down on a cot, threw my sleeping bag over my face and just started crying. Next up on the news, a chilling videotape as the Iraqis display five American POWs, wounded, frightened, under a threatening interrogation. No sign of Lynch among them. But we do see a grisly display of bodies with visible bullet holes in their heads. 
while the Iraqi tour guide smiles at the camera. Back in Work County, West Virginia, yellow ribbons go up, and so do prayers. How did you make it through? Love and support and prayer from everybody. Prayers for a girl who, 6,500 miles away, lies unconscious in the heat and dust and wreckage. Lynch's book says three hours will pass, and then she opens her eyes. What's the next thing you remember? Waking up in the hospital, surrounded by Iraqis. What was your first physical sensation? It was just pain, constant. I mean, I even tried to get up, but I, I, I was just flat on my back. I couldn't, couldn't move, move anything. Couldn't move anything. Head, was, even. No, it was so horrible. Like, I've never felt that much pain in my whole entire life. It was from my foot to my other foot to my legs to my arms to my back to my head. I knew that if I felt that pain, then at least my legs, arms, you know, head, back, everything was still attached. But I seriously thought I was going to be paralyzed for the rest of my life. Her first words to an Iraqi doctor. I kept repeating, please don't hurt me, please don't hurt me. We found that doctor, Adnan Musharrafawi, commander of the military hospital just five minutes from the ambush. I assured her that we will not uh, hurt, hurt uh, her and she is in hospital now. Did you believe them? No. I mean, who would though? I mean, if you were surrounded by a whole hospital of Iraqis, would you believe them? The doctor told us there is no question that Lynch was dying. At least once, he had to bring her back to life. Her left leg completely shattered below the knee, her foot crushed to splinters, her right arm broken at the shoulder and again below, her spine fractured in two places, a lacerating wound to her head. And then the order comes from local Iraqi officials to take the wounded American to a hospital in town, 13 minutes away. They took me from that hospital to another hospital where they took me into a room. It was complete darkness because the lights and everything were out. You thought that they were going to take you someplace and torture you. She tells the doctor her fear of Saddam Hussein. And they said back to you, don't say that name. Yeah, they told me, don't say that name in this hospital. The doctors are frightened that Saddam Hussein's name will incite the deadly Fedayeen, who have a command post in the basement of the hospital. Even so, they struggle to stabilize the foreign girl near death in severe shock with horrible injuries. I heard it, that they were about to amputate my leg. They were talking in English? Mm -hmm. I actually heard them say that, you know, they were amputating my leg. Did they tell you why? No. This whole left leg, from the femur to the foot, just completely destroyed. So, I mean, I'm, that's the only reason that they would do that. Iraqi doctors deny to us they actually planned an amputation. But Lynch insists, in some context, the word was mentioned. I started crying and screaming and just doing everything that I could to get them that, you know, the mask away from my mouth. And they just backed off. I mean, they just stopped. Outside, the Battle of Nazaria is still raging, with the Iraqis setting traps for the vulnerable Americans. The Iraqis pretend to surrender and then open fire. While in the hospital bed, as the hours and then the days pass, the girl so famous for her determination in West Virginia wages her own solitary war. I was afraid to sleep again. I was afraid of what they might do to me or what it was a scary thought. I did not want to be sleeping, but yet I was so tired that I would just keep dozing off, and I was forcing myself to stay awake. Tell them you were on a hunger strike? <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't eat any of their stuff. You would only eat orange juice and crackers? Yeah, but I had to see them open it. Because you thought they might poison me. The other thing that must have added to this was the fact you didn't have glasses. Yeah. I was straining so hard that I knew that, you know, who was who when, when they were talking to me. But from a distance, I was like, uh, you it was know. It's just blurry figures coming yeah, in and out of the room. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Never much of a crier, she says. She even rations her tears. Just for pain. But I was afraid to actually let it all out, like emotionally just, you know, cry. Because I was afraid, okay, if I do that, 
they're going to see that I am so weak, that I'm so terrified of them that, you know, they're going to win. By now, a week has passed. She's wasting down to 70 pounds. Her bladder and bowel paralyzed from her spinal injury. Her pain at the break point. And the pledge that you take where you agree to face fear, danger, and adversity with courage. I constantly told myself, you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I can't give up. There was no way that I was going to just quit. Couldn't do it. I wanted to survive. What did you think about? I wanted to go to Taco Bell and all the fast food restaurants. I was so hungry, so hungry. Hungry, too, for her old friends. I was thinking about the family being back home, Reuben, Lori. I want to know how they were doing. Not knowing that days earlier, right after the ambush, in a hospital room near hers, Lori Paestoa had died. When we return, a mission is launched. I thought, oh, you know, here it comes. They're about to kill me. It's, you know, it's, it's about to happen. Instead, a daring rescue in the middle of the night that made news around the world. Experience the extended version of The Two Towers in a special edition DVD. Can you see the bottom? There's a Bruno! New and extended scenes. This city has been reclaimed! Magonda! New visual effects. So Gandalf Graham thinks he has found his Sildur's heir. Crafted by Peter Jackson. He fears what you may become. Exclusively for DVD. Prince takes a hold of us. Never lets go. It's the DVD event of the year. Only November 18th. I had such a crush on you in high school. You did? Oh, yeah. Well, I wish I'd known. <laughs> Tom, <laughs> usually a table for one until today. You no, know, I haven't been dating in a while. He was so nervous. I'm wondering if he... I thought he could use a little help. Um... Excuse me, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but we'd really like to see you two again. I'd like that. I'd like that, too. Bringing people together. That's what Applebee's is all about. If you want to keep clothes white, but don't want to use bleach, you have two alternatives. Don't get dirty. Use the bleach alternative. Tied with bleach alternative. The detergent that whitens brilliantly without a drop of chlorine bleach. So it's your choice. Tied with bleach alternative. Inside that microphone is something familiar, a battery. And while you might think all batteries are the same, consider this. When Bon Jovi puts on a show, the battery that powers their microphones is always a Duracell. So whether you've got 50,000 screaming fans or you're working a slightly smaller room, it just has to work. Duracell, trusted everywhere. There are no gold medals for the 4x4 that masters Arctic snow. There are no championship games for fording muddy water. And there are no finish lines for the one that makes it over stacks of treacherous boulders. So why do we make sure every Jeep 4x4 is trail rated to such strict standards of capability? Perhaps the better question is, why doesn't everyone else? If it's not trail rated, it's not a Jeep 4x4. Thursday, it's a night of extremes at 8, 7 Central, a terrifying outbreak. 41 Americans have died. This time, the threat is in every American's pocket. Poison was on their money. A new threat matrix. Then, plastic surgeons give a woman with a cleft palate the confidence to smile. An all-new extreme makeover. And on a new primetime, Britney Spears like never before. Emotional, surprising, unplugged. It's her one and only interview, and it's only with Diane Sawyer. A new primetime. It all starts ABC Thursday, 8, 7 Central. TGIF Friday. How far will George go to save his Cuban in-laws? Welcome to America, the land of the free and the home of the brave. This is the Coast Guard. Swim! And all new George Lopez. Then, after a new Married to the Kellys, country star Clint Black dubbed Hope in high school. Now he's putting the moves on her sister. You're going out with him? Just like that? You're totally right. Thanks. A new Hope and Faith, followed by an all new Life with Bonnie. All part of TGIF. 
starting 8, 7 central, ABC Friday. There have been so many contradictory stories about what happened to Jessica Lynch in the hospital in Iraq. We're going to turn now to all those headlines from a man named Mohammed, who even had a TV movie of his story. In a recent network movie, a man named Mohammed tells a story of his brave role in the rescue of Private Lynch. He says at great danger, he sneaked into her hospital room to tell her not to worry. He says he saw a black-clad Fedayeen standing over her and slapping her repeatedly because he didn't like the answers to his questions. Here's what Jessica Lynch says about that. Did it happen? No. From the time I woke up in that hospital, no one beat me, no one slapped me, no one, nothing. You're sure? How can you be sure? When I was conscious, I know that did not happen. I know that did not happen. And maybe it did happen when i was unconscious but why would you slap someone while they're unconscious trying to give them answers you know he also says that at one point he came up to you and that he he said to you that he was going to get you help don't worry no i don't remember that either he's got a television movie i heard <laughs> so how do you feel about him I'm grateful for whatever he did to get me help. You know, I'm, I'm so grateful and thankful for that. I'm just saying I don't remember him. I don't know if he was there. I don't remember any of that. And today, the doctors and nurses at the hospital in Nazaria are indignant about Mohammed's account, saying he's out for himself. He's a big liar and should be hung by his ears. They told us they watched Lynch day and night, and no black-clad Fedayeen bullied her. Her only guard was a low-level watchman. They also tell how so many of them worked extra shifts to help her, while caring for hundreds of wounded Iraqi casualties a day. We treated her very well, and we saved her life. And Lynch, too, has memories of their kindness, of the nurse who brought her clothing. We are here to help her, and we are like a family to her, so nobody will hurt her. And another nurse, she says, sang her a lullaby and rubbed her with talc. And she also remembers that the doctors undertook a daring plan to hand her over to U.S. troops, sneaking her into an ambulance. He actually spoke English to me. We're trying to give you back to the Americans. They just put, like, a little cloth screen sheet kind of like over my face they put me in the ambulance and they took me and then i heard you know the bullet shots and stuff they were forced to turn back the americans firing at them fearing that the ambulance was a suicide bomber so we decided to go to iraq to try to find the doctors and bring back photos and messages from those who took care of lynch over the nine terrifying days it is a bed filled with sand to ease bed sores. It's the only one they had, and they gave it to her. Recognize it? Yeah. It is the first time in seven months she sees this room. Yeah, that's the bed I was in. Of course, it was all, the mattress and stuff was all blowed up. And this, the little tramp piece thing is what I was trying to pull myself up, but couldn't. I had no way of getting up. Today, it is called the Nazaria General Hospital, a bustling facility fully staffed by many of the same doctors and nurses who tried to help Lynch. We find the nurse she mentioned who brought her clothing. I loved her. I mean, she was just, there was something about her that made me feel like I was safe. And remember the elderly nurse who rubbed her with talc and sang a lullaby? We found her too. We asked the nurse, yeah. Even though she was embarrassed by it, would she sing that lullaby again? The word is simply a soothing sound in Arabic, sang to babies. That made me so feel so good. I'm so thankful for those people, because that's why I'm alive today. But there's a kind of shadow that comes across Lynch's face at the final message from the doctor who was her English-speaking link to the others. I remember his voice, but his face just looks so different. 
I want you to to uh, to live a happy life and to forget any 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 anything about the world and what happened in here. I want you to have a happy life, a happy normal life, <laughs> and forget anything that happened to you there. Oh. Not easy to do. Yeah, definitely not. It's... Wow. Coming up next, from a never-ending dread to a vision of hope. You had a constant dream. That was that somebody, an American, would come stand at the foot of your bed and say, we're taking you home? Yeah. Saving Private Lynch, after these messages from our ABC stations. One of the greatest crimes. One of the most respected reporters. And now, the truth. Thursday, November 20th, a two-hour television event. Forty years in the making. Peter Jennings reporting the Kennedy assassination beyond conspiracy. They call it a vanity mirror. The powerful, stylish Nissan Altima. With 0.9 financing for 60 months, it's never been more attractive. <laughs> Nissan Altima. 0.9 financing. Comcast is giving you five. A five-day cable TV sale. Call by November 14th and get three months of Comcast cable free. Plus free installation. Get up to 300 of the top cable channels. Your local channels in HD TV. No long-term commitments and no expensive equipment to buy. But hurry, our five-day sale will be over before you can count to five. Call Comcast by Friday at 866-225-2654. dynamically designed Accord Coupe. It moves, even when it doesn't move. The Accord LX for 2004, from Honda. Apply this nighttime tooth whitener, and after five minutes, most of it washes away. But Crest Night Effects forms a liquid strip coating that stays on teeth. No wonder it's clinically proven to whiten two times better. A winds to winter weather tonight at 10. And now, the rescue of Jessica Lynch. It was April the 1st, and it's hard to remember how frightened Americans were at that time, how badly the war seemed to be going. And no one knew that several sources had told American troops there was a young girl in the hospital in Nazaria. Intense planning would lead to a dramatic event, the first time a POW had been brought back from behind enemy lines since World War II. It would also become a drama that put Pentagon credibility on the line. In the dark night of April 1st, scores of Navy SEALs, Army Rangers, Marines, Air Force pilots silently move into position. The first step, special forces cut the power to the city of Nazaria. Then across town, U.S. forces begin a firefight, setting off an explosion. It's just a diversion. Minutes later, helicopters move in over the Saddam Hussein Hospital, landing right in front, within the gates. And in a room on the second floor, Jessica Lynch is awake. What is the first sound you hear on April the 1st? I start hearing helicopters, and then there was just a bunch of gunshots. And you thought it was Iraqi or American what? I hoped for it to be Americans, but I didn't know it. And that's when I started to really panic. <laughs> them say something about where PSC Jessica Lynch. She still knows that one word from Saddam Hussein and she would be executed. A nurse called Sahab was in her room and he was panicked too. They were like giants with lights on their heads and on their guns. We didn't know what they were going to do with us. They were yelling, where's Jessica? Where's Jessica? And then I thought, oh, you know, 
here it comes. They're about to kill me. It's, you know, it's, it's about to happen. And then, you know, I, the American Even though it was English, you yeah, thought... Yeah, it was just, I was preparing myself for the worst. And then once I saw, you know, the guys come in and I was like, okay, they don't look Iraqi. <laughs> and I actually had the, you know, see that it says U.S. Army on their uniform. And what was the first thing he said to you? And what did you say to him? You know, he said, you know, we're American soldiers. We're here to take you home and stuff. He's like, yeah, I'm an American soldier, too. It was a dumb, obviously a dumb thing to say, I'm an American soldier, too. But it was the first thing that came out of my mind. One guy actually ripped off the American flag off his um, suit and handed it to me. And I just, I would not let go of his hand. I clenched to his hand because I was not going to let him leave me here. He was going to take me out. We play the tape of the rescue. Jessica Lynch says she's seeing some of it for the first time. I haven't seen any of this. Yeah, I do remember that guy tripping, too. <laughs> you do? Mm-hmm. And once I got into the helicopter, I still had a hold of that guy's hand. I would not let go of him. You're doing great, Jessica. You're doing wonderful, OK? Welcome back. Were you trying to smile? What were you doing? Mm -mm. I, I didn't even know they had a camera, so I was not trying to smile or anything. You still look wary of them a little bit am i wrong yeah or are you just in scared just done? Uh, yeah still scared nervous but i kept you know telling them i'm hurting you know i'm i'm hurting i'm in pain and of course they knew that and they were trying to help me i actually felt oh my god this is real i'm going home back in west virginia at 6 p.m., the phone rings. It's the Defense Department. I actually answered the phone, and I gave it to Dad for Dad to take it. It says in the book, you started screaming on April 1st, they found my baby. Yeah. Yes. And I'm proud to be an American. Somebody starts playing God Bless the USA as all of Palestine takes to the streets. And of course, we ran in to watch the television because they said it was going to come across the television. And... U.S. Special Forces rescued rescued soldier is 19-year-old Jessica Army. Lynch Once is... is safe. She's been retrieved, and some brave souls put their lives on the line to make this happen. This now famous rescue is the event that would soon become a kind of Rorschach test for polarized American feelings about the war, with critics saying that the Pentagon used excessive force at the hospital, since everyone should have known the Fedayeen had already fled. This was a script made for Hollywood. Everyone was ready for a story of heroism. People were seduced. Now we hear that it may have been less dangerous. People ran with, with information that they shouldn't have. There were even accusations of staging for the drama. One Iraqi doctor called it something out of Hollywood. That this was just Hollywood stuff. They didn't have to use maximum force. They had no resistance of any kind. And that this was all done and filmed to have a good story to tell in the middle of a very, very dicey and worrying war. Yeah. I, I don't think it happened quite like that, though. Anyone with, you know, in that kind of situation would obviously go in with force, not knowing who was on the other side of the door. The Iraqi doctors have said, in fact, they could have walked right in. We were their friends. They didn't know that. The military would not have known that. There's no way you could have walked in a building and knowing that there was no resistance there. ABC News' Jack McQuethy has questioned the military about the Jessica Lynch story. He says the Pentagon does heatedly insist there was no way to know if that hospital was safe. It could have been an Iraqi trap. McQuethy also asked about the Washington Post story, which the Defense Department did not correct. Army leadership made a decision after Jessica Lynch had been rescued not to set the public record straight and to come in public and say, well, she didn't do the things that uh, had been attributed to her uh, would, in their view, have discredited her in a way that they did not feel was in anyone's best interest. So what did they do? They clammed up. And finally, what about the unusual release of the Special Forces video? McQuethy confirms it was just irresistible, positive PR. It was a good news story, and therefore they wanted to get it out 
quickly. Later, when you saw that they had videotaped it start to finish, did you say, oh, why, why did do they that? do that? Yeah, but I, I don't know why they did that. Does it bother you at all? Yeah, it does. It does that they used me as a way to, to symbolize all this stuff. I mean, yeah, it's wrong. I mean, I don't know why they filmed it or why they say the thing they, you know. All I know is that I was in that hospital hurting. I needed help. I wanted out of there. It didn't matter to me if they would have, you know, came in in skirts and blank guns. It wouldn't have mattered to me. I wanted out of there. And nobody questions that the men and women who mounted that rescue did it with courage and dedication. Not just for the return of Private Lynch, but the 11 bodies the Special Forces found in a grave near the hospital and returned to their families. And as of tonight, none of the commandos who rescued Private Lynch will comment or release their names, saying only they remain true to their vow, never to leave a fallen comrade behind. So they are heroes to you? Yeah, I mean... They're the ones that came in, they rescued me. Those are my heroes. Those are my true fact heroes. They risked their life. They are my heroes. Facing a mystery, a missing block of time. What doctors say happened during a sexual assault. That's the part that I hope that fades away forever. When we come back, like a mom and a kid enjoying a meal. What a beautiful sight. They're keeping it real. Now at McDonald's, there are toys inspired by Disney's new movie, Brother Bear. Hi, Mom. I love you. Starting November 20th, come to McDonald's for World Children's Day. For these four days, a portion of sales from select items will go to help children in local communities and around the world. I'm loving it. You, me, outside. We gotta talk. A minivan? It gotta be like, be like, what kind of action do you think we're gonna get in a minivan? You might as well walk around in a skirt. We had game then. And then you go and... Hi, hi. <laughs> nice. It's got a big back seat. <laughs> the Odyssey, from Honda. Sometimes you need a little help staying in the game. Introducing new Levitra. It's a new choice, and it's here now. Ask your doctor if a free sample is right for you. Ask about new Levitra. Master and Commander is taking the critics by storm. Rolling Stone Magazine raves, Russell Crowe is every inch the hero. And Roger Rebert cheers, it's just plain glorious. Master and Commander, with a PG-13, Friday. Hey, Max, great party. But won't you get caught? No, I have them all the time. How do you get away with it? Tidy cat. Ew. Actually, some of your friends are messy. No, Tidy Cat's cat litter. It's formulated for multiple cat homes and a few extra cats they might not know about. They're home early. Everyone out! <laughs> They'll never know. Tidy Cats. Multiple strength for multiple cats. Where'd everybody go? not what you think. Are we done? Britney Spears in the Zone, Monday, 8, 7 Central. And this Thursday, Britney's with Diane Sawyer in her one and only interview on Primetime. I mean, I had to stand up for you. You stood that You felt the need to find excuses for who I am? No, it was... Do you understand the damage you've caused now? Damage? No. no. you're with us. Good! Line of Fire, premiering in three weeks at 10, 9 Central on ABC. Viewer discretion is advised. Right now, you're hearing from Jessica Lynch. Tonight on Nightline, you'll hear from two other American soldiers, best friends who went to war together, saw their lives forever changed. Got something for me? You don't have
have to wait for the mail to take advantage of the Comcast holiday sale. Call now and get this great offer on Comcast high-speed internet. It's one of the fastest ways around the web and the best way to explore it. Hurry, this great offer ends soon. Call 888-824-8066. What's this? Breakfast. That's kind of early, buddy. You guys need to take some cholesterol off of you. Honey, have you been reading the Cheerios box again? I got that off the box. Cheerios is still the only leading cold cereal clinically proven to reduce cholesterol to help your heart. I was very thoughtful of you. Very early, but very thoughtful. Mm. Cheerios, good for the heart. dynamically designed Accord Coupe. It moves, even when it doesn't move. The Accord LX for 2004, from Honda. We see an architect. A 23-city tour. The next big idea. stand in awe of you and your creative potential. It's what inspires us to create software that helps you reach it. Been through so many painful surgeries, most of them while clutching a teddy bear. But her book suggests that in addition to the wounds we know about, there might have been another wound so brutal that there's nothing that can reach into her memory to make it heal. This is home video from months ago, taken by Jessica Lynch's mother at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, as her daughter was just beginning to put pressure on her smashed spine and foot. Another of her friends from the 507th had flown in to be at her side, Corporal Regina Bacon. With all that pain she went through, I've never seen her shed a tear. From surgeries, from going to table to table, I feel like I cried more than she did. <laughs> that proves that Jessica, she's very tough. Lynch can now take 40 steps without crutches. Excellent. I got to keep telling myself, yeah, I can do this. I can. Dance with me. <laughs> Her spine is still damaged. No one knows how long. You say that because of the injury in your spine, that your kidneys, bowels weren't working properly. They tried to stimulate them electronically. Didn't work. It was devastating. Yeah, it is devastating. No, that's, it didn't work. What now? Just time. Time will tell if it comes back or not. Are you ready? I'm ready. Whatever her visible injuries, her book tells of yet another one. Something, it says, that could have happened in a period she doesn't remember, in the time before the hospital and right after the crash. The exact words that the medical record shows, quote, she was a victim of anal sexual assault. That her body armor and bloody uniform were found in a house near the ambush site. I spoke with Dr. Greg Argaros, Lynch's doctor at Walter Reed, who told me there is, of course, an element of speculation, but confirmed that the medical record from her first examination by American doctors in Germany does show agreement by physicians on, quote, the traumatic nature of her perianal lesions. Lynch and her family remember the day the doctors brought them this news. It was just, you know, like they were speaking, but they weren't speaking to me. The family asked if I approached the subject with her to do it without graphic words. What did you think when you heard it? I just remember, you know, looking off into space, not rela reacting to anything. Was it a hard decision to put it in the book? Yeah, it was, because I, I have no memory of that, and I don't want people to look at me and in a shameful way, which I had no control over if it did even, in fact, happen. But, you know, if it did happen, then people need to know that that's what kind of people that they are, and that's how they treat the female soldiers that are over there. Rick Bragg, the author of the book, says Jessica did have reservations about putting these passages in. Why did you decide to put in those paragraphs about what happened in those three hours? 
Well, I think we had to. Why? Because to leave it out would leave out the consequence. You could have written a fairy tale about the princess goes off to war. That's like watching old war movies when people get shot and they don't bleed, you know? Or people get hit in the jaw and they don't fall down. Jessica got hit in the jaw and fell down. For their part, the doctors in Iraq say that the American military physician simply must have it wrong. No acute signs of rape. While the Iraqi doctors admit they did not examine Lynch for rape specifically, they insist they saw no evidence of sexual assault while preparing her for surgery. And as for her clothing, the Iraqis say, if it was found in other locations away from the ambush, it was probably looted for souvenirs from the bombed out military hospital. You really wonder whether it happened? You don't necessarily believe it? Um, it's all kind of questionable. I mean, I don't, it's all too painful. Any chance that the military spin artists are spinning you? Look, uh, I don't think so because I don't think any of this helps them. To make her, I guess, more in need of rescue, to, to make the Iraqis more the enemy. Why not leak it out at the beginning, if that's true, so they could have milked it all along? And indeed, two other POWs have now confirmed that during their captivity, they were brutally beaten. So once again, the question, is there something buried in Jessica Lynch's memory? Is it work to keep it from coming back? Do you think some, sometimes do you feel some no. memory you don't want coming back and you have to fight it away. No. I don't want to have any at all memory ever for that to come back so I can remember that. I don't want that. That's the part that I hope that fades away forever and I never, ever, you know, recall any of that. Jessica's parents, Mr. and Mrs. Lynch, say that they want to express gratitude for all her hospital care, from Walter Reed to Germany to the Fisher House, where they stayed in D.C. And they say that they continue to support the war, despite everything that happened to their daughter. When we come back, memories to keep going home. I had no idea that, you know, that community could come out and have so much love and support for just one person that probably half of them didn't even know. I'm Coming up tonight on 7 News, another wildfire. More evacuations. We're live at the fire lines with team coverage. And he was one of the lucky ones. This soldier is home tonight. Hear what he has to say about his close encounter in Iraq. 10 minutes of nonstop news is next. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Absolutely. He helped me pick this up. This holiday, how can you possibly thank the woman who always believed in you? A K Jewelers three stone diamond necklace would be a great start. And you can be assured of two things. First, that every K diamond is hand selected for exceptional beauty. And second, that she'll absolutely love it. Can I give you folks a lift? Every kiss, every kiss begins with K. On November 21st, Dr. Seuss's classic tale... This is why I don't have children. ...comes to life. Let the 12-year-old try! Like never before. This is awesome! Mike Myers. Have war. The Cat in the Hat. Rated PG. Starts November 21st. If you've made the important decision to quit smoking, call the American Cancer Society and join millions of others for the 27th Annual Great American Smokeout on November 20th. It took me years to finally quit. Unlike me, you now have effective tools to quit, including FDA-approved products and telephone support through the American Cancer Society. I wouldn't play golf without the right clubs in my bag. To stop smoking, you need the right tools, too. Brought to you by Nicoderm CQ, Nicorette, and Commit. Look out, you got three irresistible Pizzone pizza recipes. Now one for just $5.99 or two for $10.99. Is it the pepperoni lovers with mucho pepperoni? The meat lovers Pizzone with five kinds of savory meats? Or the classic Pizzone with a medley of toppings? The Pizzone, only at Pizza Hut. Now this is multitasking. Relieving stress while I take a shower. Introducing Aveeno Stress Relief Body Wash. This moisturizing cleanser with natural extracts is shown to calm and relax. New Aveeno Stress Relief Body Wash.
I'm back. By T3. Now on DVD. Terminator versus Terminator. Only one will be left standing. With revealing new footage. By Terminator 3. Rise of the Machines. Now on DVD. It is time. It still brings a smile to her family's face that in her first call after her rescue, Jessica Lynch wondered if her story might make the Wirt County paper a small weekly back home. She had no idea. I never thought, you know, that our little community even had that many people, you know, sciences and you know, Jessica, welcome home and stuff like that. And I was like, wow, you, they were behind me all this time. And I had no idea that, you know, that community could come out and have so much love and support for just one person that probably half of them didn't even know. It's great to be home. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who hoped and prayed for my safe return. Uh, for nervous. I was so nervous. And yet, at one point in the speech, you look over and you Ruben. smile. Reuben, you never let me give up. She was looking at Sergeant Reuben Contreras, who says he remembers seeing her for the first time after she returned alive. I wanted to hug her, but I didn't really know like how much pain she was in. You're, you're my inspiration, and I love you. I love him so much. I just want him to know that. <laughs> Reuben said to us, you're going to be married in June. Mm -hmm. Do we have a scoop here? Yeah. <laughs> no, we just, we're going to leave it at that. We're, it's it's going to be in June. In the meantime, Lynch is still living in the house expanded by the local community, who came up with $50,000 of their own money to do it. She says she's starting a foundation for military children and for those nearby. I want to do something for the whole community just to show them that I appreciate everything that they've done for me. Communities all over this nation that send their children off to become heroes. Children like Jessica Lynch, who don't know what's ahead when they pledge allegiance to the flag. One nation God. under God, indivisible, which you thought sounded like... <laughs> Invisible. <laughs> Yeah, at that time I did think, I thought it said invisible. I finally know what the pledge is about. It's not just about flags and presidents. I also know that the price tag for all of it is high, so high. Serving your country isn't just putting on a uniform. It's putting on a uniform and putting your life at risk. It's being scared, so scared. It's being hurt, hurt so bad you think you're gonna die. It's trying to hang on to hope. It's remembering, even when you can't fight or hide or run away, that you are still a soldier. Mostly, it's loss. It's losing someone you love, like I lost Lori. Lori Paesto, my friend. My heroes are Lori, the soldiers that are over there, the soldiers that were in that car beside me, the ones that came and rescued me. I don't look at myself as a hero. I'm just a survivor. And that's it for us on this very special Veterans Day. We'll see you again this coming Thursday for another edition of Primetime. Good night.